fireworks, loudness, those sticks. Raring to go in game seven of the 2002 World Series. And we look at the lineup put together by Dusty Baker to face the rookie, John Lackey. Kenny Lofton, he has been red hot, leads it off in center field. Same for Rich Aurelio, red hot, batting second. Jeff Kent getting hot here late in the series. Barry Bonds is hitting only 500 in this World Series. Then Santiago, J.T. Snow, Reggie Sanders really struggling. David Bell and the wild card, the surprise, Pedro Feliz is the D.H. batting in the number nine spot. And here's the rookie, John Lackey. John Lackey 1 and 0 in the postseason, 9 and 4 during the regular season. He didn't join the Angels until after the All Star break. He has remarkable success against left handed hitters, as you can see. And that's because of that natural cut fastball. He has great extension, a consistent slider. He threw the right handers of the Giants, a lot of sliders in his start last week. Take a look at some of the facts regarding game seven. How about that 17 and 17 record in the 34 prior game sevens in World Series history. However the home team has won the last seven in World Series play. The winning run scored on the final play the last three game sevens and that includes last year. The base hit by Luis Gonzalez. Kenny Lofton is set to go. The Giants trying to get on top early. The broadcast also available in Spanish by utilizing the SAP button on your television. Glad you're with us. Away we go. John Lackey on short rest. Ball one outside. Lofton, Aurelia, and Kent. If anybody gets on, Barry Bonds. Back to Lackey, off the pitcher. Kennedy. Wow. Right out of the shoot, escape save for John Lackey. Had he not made contact with the ball, then it could have been a base hit. However, it made the play for Adam Kennedy a lot easier. Got a bit of the glove on it. Kennedy took care of the rest. One, four, three, one out. And here comes Aurelia. The last three games, the top two hitters in this Giants lineup have combined for a 448 average. Aurelia overall, eight for 28 in this World Series with two home runs. Two of his six in the postseason. On the inside corner. Balls and it's 0 2 on Aurelia. The four time MVP. Likely about to pick up his fifth most valuable player award. Barry Bonds will follow Kent, who's on deck. One out, base is clear. And the 0 2. Left side. Second year in a row, fourth time in the last 15 years that there's a game seven in the World Series. And John Lackey is trying to become the first rookie in 93 years to win a World Series game seven. You go inside to get hitters out. That last pitch around the letters off the plate in. Expect Lackey to go away now. Molina sets up outside, and Aurelia got a piece of it. While we talk about any Anaheim pitcher trying to win anything, realize that the Angel starters have averaged four and a third innings pitched in this World Series. So it's exactly what the Angels got last night out of Kevin Apier, who you saw. There's Jared Washburn. 
who in the right circumstance could be available tonight. Likes ball one to Rich Aurelia. Interesting reaction from Aurelia. Straightened up and a glare at Lackey. Back away. Molina. Two up. Interesting choice by Lackey. He went inside. Aurelia fouled it off. He went outside with the slider. He came right back inside farther. And then he got Aurelia on the slider. Working both sides of the plate very effectively early. And now with two out, nobody on. Jeff Kent stands in. Lackey lasted five innings in game four of the World Series in San Francisco and no decision in a 4-3 Giants victory. Kent, strike one. The 24-year-old from Abilene, Texas. Strike. Very tightly wrapped slider, and Jeff Kent holds up. According to Angel Hernandez, the first base umpire. One ball, one strike. Two out, nobody on. Top of the first, game seven. Two and one. Jerry Crawford is the crew chief. He was behind the plate in game one. And he's back for game seven. John Lackey trying to downplay the importance of tonight's game. He said in the press conference yesterday, oh, I've pitched in a lot of big games. <laughs> Nothing like this. Here's a 2-1 pitch to Kent. 2-2. Two two. championship pitching for Grayson County College went 10 and 3 during that championship season Grayson County the home of Gene Autry how about that the former beloved owner of these angels Three two pitch driven into right field back is salmon at the wall Levon Hernandez and his turn in the bottom of the first no score Hernandez a former World Series MVP in 97 with Florida the lineup for Anaheim X9 Erstad seven in the middle Anderson Gloss Fulmer and at the back end Spezio a big hero from last night for the Angels Benji Molina and Adam Kennedy a very good number nine hitter Levon Hernandez lost his first postseason game to the Angels when he started in game three. Angels scored four runs in the top of the third inning. And they had a big fourth scoring four more runs. And routed the Giants 10 to four. Next up, ball one low. 
control has been a problem this postseason for Hernandez coming off that game three start which he threw 92 pitches in only three and two thirds innings and walked five. Two and oh on X guy. Two and one. Hernandez a 16 game loser 12 and 16 during the regular season. Three and one. Next time taking two and oh he's probably taking again. The idea being make Hernandez throw two straight strikes. Speaking of walks, Bud Black, the pitching coach for the Angels, was peeking at Barry Bonds in the on deck circle in the top of this first. Come on. Look at Barry. He knows if he gets on, we're going to walk him. That's the pose that Barry struck in the on deck circle. That's his eyes following the fly ball off the bat of Jeff Kent, which ended the inning. Now a leadoff walk puts X9 aboard and brings Darren Erstad to the plate. Breaking ball misses, ball one. Erstad was one for his last 12. Before that leadoff eighth inning home run, which brought the Angels to within one. In that four run third in game three, the way the Angels started, a walk to Exton. There will be a short leash for Levon Hernandez if he struggles here early. Kurt Reeder is a possibility the early innings out of the bullpen for San Francisco. A bunt. Out at first and down to second is Eckstein. Mike Sosia playing for an early lead. You may remember the first game of the postseason at Yankee Stadium in the first inning with Eckstein aboard. Erstead bunted. I don't think it's a bad idea Joe because of what you said in the opening if the Giants need to get the early lead the Angels scoring once maintaining the momentum they built up yesterday Tim Salmon has the RBI chance a walk to Eckstein a bunt by Erstad and Salmon who has five RBIs in this World Series stands in. Hands ball one. Salmon came up with the Angels in '92. Hit only 227 last year. Rebounded for a 286 average, 88 RBIs this year for Mike Sosa. The top home run hitter in franchise history at the plate for the Angels. On the inside corner, two and one, and there's Yvonne Hernandez pitching backward, as you like to say. Yep, curveball on 2 0 count. He is not conventional in any way. The 
you're looking for a fastball, change your thinking if you're a hitter. Look for the breaking ball. Next down to second with one out. First inning. Two balls, two strikes on seven. And that is our scouting report. Another breaking ball. They even the count at two and two. Curve balls on fast on fastball counts. A remarkable athlete. Very graceful presence on the mound. As Joe said, 16 losses, but he is a winner in postseason. Hernandez has come back to even the count at two. Surprised to see Dusty Baker get someone up in that bullpen. Talked about a short leash. Kirk Reeder. There were those who thought Reeder should have started tonight. You're going to pitch Hernandez. You might as well start him. Have a guy like Brad Fulmer in the game as the designated hitter. He's a left-handed batter. And perhaps counter with the left-handed reader in the middle inning. At least that was Dusty Baker's thinking. World Series game five, eight walks. From Yvonne Hernandez. Through 142 pitches that night. But beat Cleveland at Jacobs Field. He's walked two in the first inning here and deals with Garrett Anderson two on one out. No score in the first inning. Too far outside ball one. The body language from Yvonne Hernandez already is that of frustration with the home plate umpire Jerry Crawford. Body language in that long stare after the curve ball. Side corner, one ball, one strike. Yvonne Hernandez talked a lot about the home plate umpire after game three. That was Tim Sheeta. Tonight it's Jerry Crawford. A 1 1 pitch to Garrett Anderson. Into center field. Lofton coming on. Makes the catch. Eckstein doubled off to end the inning. The double play 8 4 with Kent taking the throw. And David Eckstein charged up in the first inning. Runs the Angels out of the first. Two walks. Hernandez gets around him. Thanks in large part to this mistake by Eckstein. After one in game seven, Giants and Angels no score. Barry Bonds leads off the second for the Giants and Lackey deals ball one down and in. Bonds up to start the inning. And the Angels at least giving the appearance that they will pitch to Bonds with no score. And they do in a line drive to the shortstop Eckstein playing where a second baseman normally would. One out can't hit it any harder than this. A low tracer and Epstein 
is where the second baseman normally would be. Adam Kennedy, the second baseman in short right. So Bonds is retired. Now seven out of 15 in this World Series. By the way, four of the seven hits have left the park. Here's Benito Santiago. It was only four out of 23 against the Angels. Up and after a pitch, strike one. When talking to Mike Sosha before the game, he indicated he would be more willing to allow Lackey to work through trouble than he was going into last night's game with Kevin Apier on the mound. Mike, because of his past as a catcher, talking about the rhythm between a pitcher and a catcher and how important it is. He is so right. And all one to Santiago. Strike two. The difference being that the rhythm and the cadence has to come earlier in this game than any other game in the season. Levon Hernandez in his rhythm. It was off in the bottom of the first. And then when he got out of the inning, a line drive to center went into the dugout and was screaming at the home plate umpire, Jerry Crawford. That's just inside. One ball, two strikes. So Hernandez already upset about not getting certain pitches called for strikes. In fairness to Jerry Crawford, I didn't see a disputable pitch thrown by Hernandez. Here's a one two pitch. Santiago up the middle, under the glove of Eckstein, and a one out hit. First base runner of the night for the Giants. Santiago against Lackey. In that game, he started in San Francisco, grounded into two double plays. Lackey hangs a slider, and it gets by the diving Eckstein. So one on one out and J.T. Snow will be the hitter. Snow eight hits and 23 trips in this World Series one home run. That came way back in game one. Fastball for a strike. J.T. Snow, who grew up rooting for the then California Angels, buying a ticket, sneaking down with his friends, getting better seats behind the dugout, getting chased away by security, only to find another empty spot with open seats. He was heartbroken, as many of these Angel fans have been over the years, rooting for this Angel team. Lost the ALCS in 79, 82, and 86. One ball, two strikes on Snow. That was a very good fastball from Lackey, and the extension we were talking about, left handed hitters in particular, have a very tough time picking up the fastball, a cut fastball, and as you see, Snow hits it over the plate instead of out in front. Santiago at first with one out. Snow fouls another. Playing Snow to hit it the other way as Erstad is shaded over toward left center. Two of the biggest hits that JT has had in this postseason have gone to left center. One off the wall in the NLCS and one over the wall. Game one of this World Series. Two balls, two strikes. And his home run, and the Giants win four to three. The only game the Angels have lost in the postseason. Here in Anaheim. Seven and one in this ballpark. It's the Yankees, the Twins, and the Giants. The 2 2 pitch. Full count. After Snow, it's Reggie Sanders. A 
that 2 2 pitch so important with a runner on base because now Santiago will be running. He's going 3 2 pitch and will do it again. Giants have their full complement of children in their dugout again tonight. And the Angels have a packed stadium. It makes more noise than any that we've visited in any October over the past few years. Giants jumped out in front last night. Three to nothing, four to nothing, five to nothing, and the Angels didn't get on the board until a three run seven. Three more in the eighth and a six five win. Hunter goes on another foul ball. Very important as Santiago picking up the signs from third base coach Sonny Jackson. When you take two and a half, three steps, you look toward the hitter and find the ball. You're not running to steal the base, but depending on the hitter to put the ball in play, preferably on the ground. Runner goes, 3 2 pitch, and a shot into right center field. That ball will be cut off by Erstad. Santiago will hold it third. And it's first and third one out as the Giants threaten here in the second. J.T. Snow, not a fast runner, could have gone to second. Nobody was on the bag. Eckstein served as the cutoff man. Kennedy was the first cutoff man. And then Spezio was third. Nobody was on the bag. Snow took a wide turn. There's Kennedy, there's Eckstein, and there's Spezio. Nobody was on the second base bag. Watch Snow's decision here. He rounds the bag widely. If you go to second, nobody's there. Split the scene, just like a running back. An important play with one out. Runners at the corners now. Sanders trying to put the ball in play and put the Giants out in front. Sanders has had a tough time this postseason doing just that. 18 strikeouts in this World Series, nine. You see the numbers, 185 overall this postseason. And Dusty Baker concerned with what Sanders has been doing at the plate. Doing a lot of that, so much so that the D.H. tonight is Pedro Feliz instead of Tom Goodwin because Dusty Baker wants to save Goodwin for a time when Sanders comes up against a right hander to make the move to the left handed hitting Tom Goodwin when the Angels have a right handed uh, high fastball pitcher for instance you could see a pinch hitter for Sanders middle to late in the game a 1 1 pitch misses outside two balls and a strike. Reggie Sanders playing in this game seven. Part of the world champion Arizona Diamondbacks last year. Did not play in that game. Dusty Baker sticking with him. That's foul. And it's a 2 2 count. And Lackey and the Angels are thinking strikeout with Sanders. The 2 2 count. If you're thinking strikeout, then you go above the hands. The two strikes on sliders. The Angels have done a very good job once again throwing Reggie Sanders letter high fastballs when they need the strikeout. Giants trying to take the lead here in the second inning of game seven. And now 
Molina will go out and talk to the 24-year-old Lackey. Yeah, Molina's been behind the plate every game. Lackey may want to throw him a slider. I think Molina called for the fastball. And since Lackey thought slider, perhaps, Molina thought fastball, you've got to get it straight. Ultimately, the pitcher decides, of course. Dusty Baker has been shocked at Sanders' inability to hit the fastball. A chance for Reggie Sanders and the Giants. And a slider in the dirt scooped up by Molina, three and two. I've got to believe Lackey talked Molina out of it. He shook him off twice. And then Molina went out there and he threw the slider. It's a backhanded stab by Molina. Last night, a wild pitch as Lofton scored the third run of the ball game on a similar pitch. I don't think you can send snow right here because Sanders strikes out too much. Calling for another slider. And Sanders gets it off the end of the bat, deep into left field. Garrett Anderson with a catch, tagging, coming to the plate is Santiago. The Giants lead one to nothing. A breaking ball to Reggie Sanders, and Reggie Sanders puts San Francisco out in front. From a catcher's standpoint, all you can do is call for the fastball, call for the fastball. You can't throw it. And with a young pitcher like that, you're not going to convince him. And he did stick with the slider. And Sanders drives the first run in of this ball game for the Giants. So Sanders does his job. The one out hit by Santiago was running. They hit by Snow, sent him to third as David Bell cranks one foul. A sack fly by Sanders, and the Giants do indeed get on top here in game seven early. David Bell has had a wonderful postseason hitting 321 with two home runs and six RBIs and has given the Giants a big threat out of the number eight spot. One ball one strike. Another slider. Might be a time where Bud Black, after this half inning is over, get with John Lackey and say, believe in your fastball. He's throwing too many sliders right now. Another one for a strike, and it's one and two. The more sliders you throw to right-handed batters, the less effective it is. Another slider and a check swing by Bell. We're also talking about a 24-year-old in Lackey. Who has a 93 94 mile an hour fastball? Exactly right. Giants lead, runner at first, two out. That's five. What's on the line here tonight for Anaheim, their first world championship in franchise history? The San Francisco Giants, their first world championship since becoming the San Francisco Giants. Last title for this franchise in 1954, back in New York. A ball and two strikes on Bell with two out. Just inside, it's two and two. Up under the arms of David Bell. You can get inside to David. But one of his strengths, inside part of the plate high fastball. See if Lackey goes back to the slider on two and two. He dies in the inning is over. Second strikeout for Lackey. First run of the night in game seven. It belongs to the Giants here in Anaheim. 
driven in by Reggie Sanders. Angels coming to bat down by one. Bottom of the second in game seven. The Giants on top one to nothing. And Levon Hernandez who walked two. But got away with that. Anderson lined into a double play in center. Eckstein straying too far from the bag. Is back to the hill. Gloss, Fulmer, and Spezia. Tailing fastball for strike one. Lost last night. The game winning double. Came in the eighth inning. But scored two and put the Angels on top for good. On the inside corner, it's 0 2. And Gloss spins out of there. Troy thinking it was inside. But Hernandez gets the call and Gloss in the hole. No balls, two strikes. One out. And the first strikeout of the night for Levon Hernandez. Control for a pitcher is being able to throw balls off the plate when you want to also. The count, no balls and two strikes. Pitching blocks perfectly. Between innings, Dusty Baker came out and had a mild mannered discussion with a home plate umpire, Jerry Crawford. Not flailing his arm, not doing anything, but standing and talking with Crawford. And you wonder if the strike zone. And or Levon Hernandez reaction to the strike zone in the first inning it was the topic of conversation as Fulmer takes ball one. Or maybe because it's game seven of the World Series, Hernandez understandably overreacting perhaps. Maybe that was a jest of Dusty's conversation. A 1 0 pitch to Fulmer with one out in the second. Breaking ball low, it's 2 0. There's a conversation between Baker and Crawford. You can see Crawford saying, I don't have to put up with that. And I am certain that the reaction by Levon Hernandez when he hit the dugout at the bottom of the first inning after getting out of trouble is exactly what they were talking about. 2 0 to Fulmer. There's a strike, 2 and 1. Breaking ball on a 2 0 count. Once again, Hernandez true to form. Fulmer's going to be a tough guy for Hernandez. He handles the breaking ball well, and you've got to pitch inside to be effective against him. Hernandez doesn't throw that hard. Fulmer into left center field. Kenny Lofton to his right on the run. Nice catch, two out. Kenny Lofton tracking down a mistake by Hernandez. We've mentioned that before we went on the air talking about that. How Brad Fulmer could be a thorn in the side of Hernandez tonight because of his inability of coming inside. Lofton tracks down a mistake. Spezio had one of if not the most important swing of the bat last night for the Angels and is a big reason why this World Series has gone to seven games a two out three run home run in the seventh and after I think everybody would agree with this a tremendous at bat a pitch that was down down and in and up and out and a 5 3 Giants lead Giants lost the lead the next day. Spezio takes the ball. Dusty Baker telling us tonight before the game, how in the world can Spezio make contact on all those pitches? Why can't he pop a pitch up like that in play? Well, he didn't. And then Dusty Baker caught himself and said, ah, ah. 
Yep. That's last night. Forget <laughs> yeah. about last night. We've got a game tonight. It's like he has to continually remind himself not to think what might have been last night. Right. And the Giants blew a five to nothing lead. One ball, two strikes on Spezio with two out. Too far outside, two and two. As the Angels were rallying last night, television cables, radio cables, protective covers for the lockers were coming down in the Giants clubhouse that had been put up in anticipation of a World Series victory celebration. Willie Mays was seen walking around with a champagne bottle down there. And all that came to a screeching halt at the bottom of the eighth. And now a 3-2 pitch to Spezio. A breaking ball misses for the third walk of the night from Yvonne Hernandez. That'll bring in Benji Molina. Only four hits in this World Series for the Anaheim catcher. Benji was hopeful that the World Series would be over before Sunday, obviously. Hopeful that the Angels would win it, and the reason for that, he wanted to get back to Puerto Rico to see his dad Benjamin inducted into the Amateur Hall of Fame. Good pitch on the inside corner for a strike. Benji joined by his brother on this active roster for the Angels, Jose Molina. Javier, their youngest brother. The Cardinal system, also a catcher. Dad is a second baseman. The 0 1 pitch. Ball and a strike. All time amateur hits leader in Puerto Rican history. And of course, Pop understands. Fifth set of brothers to appear on the same team in the World Series. Felipe and Matty Alou, the last tandem to do it. Molina tried to check his swing. Wow. Angel Hernandez said he didn't go, and it counts two and one. I think Molina got a break right here. He went too far. You could see the wrists coming through the strike zone. But he was as adept to bringing the bat back as he was going forward. Angel's got a break right there. So the count's two and one. One to nothing, San Francisco, bottom of the second of game seven. Time called before the pitch. And Santiago is the one that asked for time. That bails Jerry Crawford out of trouble with the pitcher, Levon Hernandez, who was glaring in at Crawford again. And normally a hitter would be the one to ask for time, but it was Santiago up with the right hand. And Hernandez had already gone through his motion. Pitchers can get hurt that way. There's so much force behind the pitch. But when you stop suddenly, pull a side muscle, shoulder muscle, elbow. Understands that a pitcher throws breaking balls on fastball counts perhaps more than any other angel is Benji Molina. 
He gets a breaking ball, and the ball hit the top of the fence. A break for the Angels. That ball came very nearly bouncing out of the ballpark. If that had happened, of course, Spezio had to stop at third. Molina at second, two out, and the crowd is awake again. Ball one. Less than a foot of bouncing out of play for a ground rule double, which would have held Spezio at third. Now it's a tie game. Runner at second, two out, and a 1 0 pitch. Kennedy pops it up. In the center for Lofton. That'll do it for the first two innings. Each side gets a run. Everything is all even as we go to the third. And John Lackey heads back to the hill. Surprise, you're starting in game seven of the World Series. That's what greeted Pedro Feliz when he walked into the clubhouse today. 0 for 2 in this World Series. First start in this postseason as he digs his way in, dealing with John Lackey. Feliz is likely the third baseman of the future for the Giants. Had a big power year in 2000 and 33 home runs, knocked in 105. And he is in there because Dusty Baker likes his chances against the style of pitching of John Lackey. He thinks he can take him out to center or right center. That's why he got the nod tonight. To the third baseman loss has a great arm. Sprint virtual manager question. Vote now using PCS Vision from Sprint or log on to FoxSports.com. A momentum question. The Giants took some of it back with a run in the top of the second. The Angels came right back with a two out RBI double by Benji Molina. And with one out, nobody on. Lofton takes a breaking ball for a strike after showing bunt. Lofton then Aurelia. If anybody gets on in the inning, Kent. And then you know who. Spezio there to block it. Two up. That'll bring in Rich Aurelia. They were getting on the phone for only one reason, talking about the bottom of the third inning. Game seven, it's an inning to inning decision on pitchers. And the bottom of the third inning might be a time that if Levon Hernandez is in any trouble, you could see one of four left handers the Giants can feature tonight in their bullpen get busy. Mike Sosha able to stagger his lineup right, left, right, left. But it'll be Eckstein, then Erstad, the lefty, Salmon, then Anderson, the lefty. As we watch Aurelia take ball one. Right off the end of the bat and hitting Molina between the legs. The last two nights, Santiago and Molina have just taken a beating physically. It did hit the bat. It is strike one. With two out, nobody on. And our sprint virtual manager, which team has the momentum right now, the vote is with the Angels. So it's an 0 1 count on Aurelia. And that's driven into left field off the end of the back for Garrett Anderson. And the Giants go in order. Top of the order for Anaheim. Bottom of the third inning in game seven. With San Francisco and the Angels tied 1 1. Overhead shots tonight and throughout the 2002 World Series provided by the Saturn Light Ship. The team at Saturn hopes you're enjoying this look from high above. 
Southern California. Top of the order for the Angels. Eckstein takes the ball. He drew a walk his first time. And made a base running mistake and ran the Angels out of the first, getting doubled off. And a ball hit to center by Garrett Anderson. One ball, one strike. You could understand Eckstein's mistake if the ball were hit to left center or right center. But he had a very good view of it and locked and doubled him off easily. That step right there, the crossover, is what nailed it. He couldn't get back, he couldn't recover. One ball, one strike. Next down into left field, Bonds on a bounce. Next down on with a leadoff single. Barry Bonds has got to be thinking everything in this outfield bounces back to my left. Last night he made an error on a similar ball hit by Garrett Anderson. It wasn't hit quite that well. He had to go toward the line. The ball skipped back to his left, and that error allowed Sean Pickens to go to third. That was the inning that the Angels took the lead on the double by Gloss. It also allowed the go-ahead run Anderson to get in the scoring position, and then Gloss delivered. Leadoff man is on for the second time tonight for the Angels. Now it's Erstad. The Angels ask Erstad to bunt back in the first. I would be surprised if they do it again here in the third. That yeah, would too. Erstad, one of the hotter Angel hitters, hitting 353 in postseason. May sacrifice once, but I don't think twice in a row. Too far outside, ball one. A lot of things Mike Sosha can do here. Straight steal, hit and run. The count in Erstead's favor. Hernandez not a hard thrower. Easy to make contact. There's a strike and it's one and one. Two managers in this series, Dusty Baker, Mike Sosha, teammates, the world champion 81 Dodgers. Matching wits, making moves against one another. And it boils down to game seven. A 1 1 score in the bottom of the third. A 1 1 pitch. Into left field, another hit. Two on, nobody out. Baker does not have the luxury of keeping anybody else seated in the giant bullpen. Fine hitting by Erskine. Look how far that ball is outside. Eight inches. Smoke the left. To further what you just said, I too am surprised that nobody's up in the Giants' bullpen. I, I really am. I mean, uh, If it's going to be a guy like Reader, he's going to need extra time because he's a starter and not used to getting ready in a hurry. Salmon with two on and nobody out. Good speed on for Anaheim. Eckstein and Erstad. Ball one. Salmon walked his first time. Even if it's not Reader, there are three left-handers in the bullpen who are used to coming in mid-inning, getting ready in a hurry. And Air, Fultz, and Zerbe, everyone available to the Giants tonight, but nobody loosening. depend on another base running mistake by Eckstein to get you out of an inning. Salmon 
looking for a pitch can hammer on two and oh. Two and one. Again, Levon Hernandez behind in the count two and oh. And again, it's not the fastball. The salmon just got a piece of it. Time picking up Ron Renicky, the third base coach, and looking at him for a long time. Often when that happens, the unusual hit and run with runners on at first and second. Sam and a good low ball hitter, and in a position here where he's got to make contact. Good hitting count for Sam. Good pitch from Levon Hernandez. Kept it down and away, and it's two and two. Well, that was nasty. Best breaking ball that Hernandez has thrown in this game. So Levon able to come back from a 2 0 count to even at a 2 2. After hits by Eckstein and Erstad. are going and Salmon hit by the pitch to load him up. Salmon who wears protection on that left hand the back of the left hand looks like he caught it off the right hand the fingers on the right hand to load the bases here in the third inning. Those balls Press the fingers against the bat. That's the danger. It looked like the middle finger and the index finger. There have been many, many serious injuries of major leaguers over the years as a result of pitches like that. That's his throwing hand also. So if it is, if it does need x-ray, then Mike Sosa will determine whether he has to make a move from a defensive standpoint. This one hurt. Now they start to stir in the Giants' bullpen. But now the left-handed hitting Garrett Anderson walks to the plate with the bases loaded and nobody out. Tosic and Zerbe. All eyes on Anderson and Hernandez. Good tailing pitch for strike one. Grand slams in the career of Garrett Anderson. He's 8 for 29 in this World Series. No home runs and three RBI.
Thiago being sent out to the mound to talk to LeVon Hernandez. A high fastball to Garrett Anderson. Rifle down the right field line. Tim Salmon running the bases angrily. <laughs> That's as fast as Salmon can get around the bases. And he scored because of this momentary juggle there. Interference could have been called there. It looked like Reggie Sanders ran into a thunder stick. It looked like a fan had dropped that thunder stick over the right field fence, perhaps, and interfered with Reggie Sanders. We'll take another look at it. No, but pounding him on the back, he had dropped the ball. It did not appear that that was the reason he missed it. An intentional pass being handed to Gloss. He shouts out encouragement to Brad Fulmer. And as Fulmer took two steps toward home plate, Dusty Baker makes his way out of the dugout. And this will surprise Levon Hernandez that he is likely to come out of this game. He is. The first five reach here in the third inning. Serbi will enter. Hernandez hangs his head and exits. Anderson into the corner. And the man who drove home 123 runs during the regular season and bench cleanup. A quiet producer for this Anaheim Angels team has made it 4 to 1 in the third. Levon Hernandez in the dugout. Chad Zerbe on the mound, dealing with Fulmer and a foul for strike one. Zerbe has impressed the heck out of Dusty Baker in this postseason. He really enjoyed what Chad gave the Giants in game two. Coming on in relief and pitching four innings, allowing only one earned run. Levon Hernandez only goes two plus innings. And Fulmer bats with two on it, still nobody out in the third. To the shortstop. Aurelia, Kent. First and third, one out. Not hit hard enough to turn two. And also, Brad Fulmer, a fast runner, getting out of the box because the pitch was outside. He was running toward first. And running hard. That prevents a double play. If you're thinking about a sacrifice, the reason Sosia didn't sacrifice with Fulmer, he's never sacrificed in his professional career. Anderson at third, Fulmer at first, and here's Spezia. Spezio teed off on left-handed pitching during the regular season. Ball one. Reggie Sanders on this ball. The ball comes out of his glove before the pounding. But no outfielder needs to take a beating like that from anybody. At the very least, that fan should be ejected. You can't do that. Derby looks at Fulmer. I think it's fair to say it didn't affect the outcome of the play. Right. But the penalty that's enforced should be ejection for that fan. I think so. Spezio calls for time. Hit 368 during the regular season against left-handed pitching. And now, a balloon. A surgical glove blown up. <laughs> Just to pass it along, security is removing that fan 
out in the right field seats. As we're ready to play, one ball, no strikes. First and third, one out. Third inning. That's a fair ball. Back the plate. Good play by Bell, and out is Garrett Anderson for the second out of the inning. And David Bell turns in a terrific play. And it was really the only play that Bell had. You have to adjust your thinking if you're an infielder. Number one, complete the play. You're looking for the ground ball for the double play, but when a ball's not hit hard enough, look at the play that Bell had to make. He had the runner. He had to throw quickly to Santiago, so the runner didn't get in the way. A terrific play by David Bell. That is a very difficult play to make. How do you ever practice a play like that? You can't. So Anderson out at the plate. And now it's first and second. Two out is Zerbe. Just one out away from shutting down the Angels. And he deals with the number eight hitter, Benji Molina. First five reached in this inning, including the intentional pass to Gloss. Zerbe relief, got the force out at second. The fielder's choice at the plate. And it's a 1 0 count on Benji Molina, who has an RBI double tonight. One and one. Zerby, who at one time pitched in the independent league. Getting the first chance out of the bullpen tonight in game seven. And doing a tremendous job. Kent takes care of Molina, and Chad Zerby has kept the San Francisco Giants in this one. What good work by the left hander. We played three in game seven. In the third inning, back to back hits by Eckstein and Erstad. Sam and hit to load him up, and Garrett Anderson, his first extra base hit of this World Series, made it four to one. The World Series on Fox is brought to you by Budweiser, delivering beer at its best with a crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only to the king of beers. It's game seven. It's inning number four. And it will be John Lackey back to work. The right guys are coming up for the Giants to do something about this three-run hole. Kent, Bonds, and Santiago. Kent flied out to the wall and right his first time up. Strike one. Moments ago, Bud Black said this to John Lack. Location. Location. All right. I shook him up a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely, you did. One pitch at a time, trying to slow it down. Not get too anxious for this three run lead. Breaking ball in for strike two. That location, location is 17 inches of real estate. Kent trying to get on in front of Bonds. On the inside corner, one away. Tailing fastball to get Kent. The Angels pitched to Bonds in the second. He lined out to the shortstop on the second base side of the bag. And they'll pitch to him here in the fourth inning, leading by three. Ball one. Sprint virtual manager question. The times the Angels walk Bonds. They didn't walk him in the second. They don't intend to walk him. Here in the fourth inning, up by three. The count's gone to 2-0. Oh. Bonds may be ready to tee off on home run number five in this World Series and nine in this postseason. I doubt that Barry will get 
a breaking ball. Oh, I beg your pardon, I doubt that he'll get a fastball since it's a fastball count. If it is a fastball, it'll shave a corner. <laughs> right down the pipe. Right down the middle. Lackey said, here, hit it. Bonds took it. Two and one. Uh, <laughs> crack analysis. Huh? To the left side. Diving stop by Gloss. Can't make the play at first. That was the third baseman, the former shortstop at UCLA, making a diving stop to his right to keep the ball on the infield, but it's a one-out infield single. Look where Gloss is playing. The Angels come as close to having four infielders on the right side as you'll find. But he had too far to go. Bonds with a pulled hamstring for about two months of the season is running well now. No way to get buried. An infield hit for Bonds. Sounds strange, does it not? One on, one out. Santiago takes a breaking ball for a strike. Realized Bonds came up in his first four years in the big leagues. 86 to 89 was a leadoff hitter. At 256, he was considered an underachiever. And then in 1990, Jim Leland. Moved him to fifth behind Bobby Bonilla. And he had career highs to that point 33 home runs and 52 stolen bases. Santiago with a base hit to center field. Back to back singles by Bonds and Santiago. And the tying run will come to the plate in the person of JT Snow here in the fourth. Molina setting up inside. He got it inside. Santiago gets inside of it. You hear that from hitters a lot. Stay inside the ball. Santiago did then. Giants trying to come back. Santiago two for two and JT Snow who singled his first time. Nine hits in this World Series. Good average. That's with two on one out. Two postseason home runs, six during the regular season. Ball one. Bonds the lead runner at second. Santiago the trail man at first with one out. Snow takes a strike. Keep pitching on short rest the velocity down a bit since the first two innings as he works in the fourth and we'll see how much more trouble has to present itself for the Angels to get action going in their bullpen. Reader is getting ready for the Giants as Snow hits one to center. Two out. The Giants scored their only run on a sacrifice fly by Reggie Sanders. The breaking ball misses. Waving through the breaking ball. Now Lackey misses with the fastball. Another breaking ball. Another slider. And yet another slider. Five out of six pitches were sliders. John Lackey pitching in college in the minor leagues. They don't hit pitches like that, but up here they do. Another one that misses for ball one, and this flies right in the face of any scouting report that's been put together on Reggie Sanders, not just this year, but the last five or six years, forever, since he came up with the Reds. Low fastball hitter. Two on with two out. Chance for Reggie Sanders. There's the high fastball, and there's strike one. A chance for the Giants to get some or all of those runs right back. Back to back singles by Bonds and Santiago. They're on with two out. Four to one Angels, top of the fourth. On a 
another high fastball. Strike two. You can see how far Sanders misses the high fastball. Hoping to get a chance to bat here in this fourth inning, waiting on deck. And Molina, again, for the second time with Sanders at the plate, is out to talk to Lackey. Get Reggie Sanders out with a slider. No, it doesn't mean that, but you're dealing with probability. Now is not to, the time to feature a pitch that Sanders can hit. And you'll hit the slider better than the high fastball. Back to the fastball, and Sanders got a piece to stay up there at two and two. Lackey gets this one down a little lower, and Sanders stays alive. up the fastball back into the low 90s during this at bat by Sanders trying to draw the Giants closer in game seven again time called the plate to the right side. Salmon. Getting over. Two hits in the inning, two left. The Giants have left three. Bottom of the fourth inning, game seven. And the Angels lead by three. Kirk Reeder appears out of the bullpen for San Francisco. Believed in one game back in 2000 for the Giants. And here in game seven, he deals a strike to Adam Kennedy, and we're underway in the bottom of the fourth inning with Anaheim up four to one. Kennedy, Eckstein, and Erstad against the Reader. Off the hands, 0 and 2. Chad Zerby came in the game, and as you can see right there, on it looks like his left thumb, there is a blister. Right above the railing. You can see the blood from the blister. So Zerby is out of there. He may have been taken out anyway with Reeder. More established starter. What a job by Zerby. One perfect inning. He came into the game with two on and nobody out and got out of further trouble. That's ball one to Kennedy. Adam flying to center his first time up. And why the Angels got past the Minnesota Twins. Two and two. Judges watching David Eckstein on deck just have to wonder what he's going to do tomorrow. 
when the season's over one way or the other. How you gonna keep him still? The 2-2 to Kennedy. Just missed, low and away. It was 0-2, now it's full. Two to Kennedy. One out. And a strikeout by Reeder to start the bottom of the fourth. High fastball gets him. David Eckstein walks in, and we hear from him about his intensity without being tense. It's the only way we know how to play. And it's actually a relaxing state for us to be that intense because it gets us into our focus, and that's what we need to do. Both of us have, you know, similar type routines in which we got to do the same thing every day. And so it becomes a comfort level for us when the game starts and our intensity starts flowing. Intensity in the top two spots in the lineup, Eckstein and Erstad. David talking about his partner at the top of the order for the Angels. And Eckstein has been on base twice. One ball, one strike. Down into left field. Bonds is there. Ball almost took off on Barry. Two out. Right there is where it almost took off on Barry Bonds. Two up, two down, and here's Erstad, who followed Eckstein's base hit. With a hit to left last inning. Salmon hit by a pitch to load him up. Garrett Anderson emptied the bases with a three run double. 25 hits this postseason for Darren Erstad. Darren Baker. A 1 0 pitch. Erstad. Ball one strike. Marquise Grissom back in 95 also had 25 hits. And he has hit in 15 of the 16 games that the Angels have played since they opened up this postseason, taking on the Yankees in the division series. Strike two. You go back to that series, and you and I were there for the first two games. Blowing a late eighth inning lead in game one of the division series in New York. Thought there was no way the Angels could come back and win game two, which they did. And the next two, the move past the Yankees. The AL champs. First half strikes out. It was an early indication of how special this Anaheim team is in 2002. We go to the fifth. Four to one Angels back after this from your local Fox station. Angels and David Bell after a pitch it was up. A high fastball strike one. Bell, Pedro Feliz and then Kenny Lofton for the Giants who were down by three. It's the fifth inning now of game seven. Giants got the first run in the second. The Angels answered immediately. Bottom of the second. And then Anaheim got three runs driven in by Garrett Anderson in the third. On the outside corner, strike two. Bell struck out his first time. Straight fastballs, one ball, two strikes. The Giants are looking for any edge, and obviously they are. If they hit a ball to right field, you can't take the extra base knowing that Salmon was hit on the right hand. It's obviously got to be painful. It's off the end of the bat, and just as a foul. One ball, two strikes, still on Bell. Got to take those things into consideration before the ball is hit. By doing that, you anticipate taking the extra base on a ball to his left or right to do it.
Jeff Kent could be wearing a Giants uniform for the last time. Same for Dusty Baker, the manager of San Francisco. A one-two pitch to Bell. Two and two. In fact, when you talk about Dusty Baker, he was asked prior to the game about him coming back regarding Peter McGowan. He said if somebody wanted him back, then they would. A lot of you wouldn't wait till the last minute to tell them. A public statement by Dusty Baker prior to this game seven. Here's a 2 2 pitch. David Bell leading off. Full count. Lackey has not walked a batter. He struck out three. On one run on four hits. Into left center field. Erstad coming on. Diving catch for the out. One out in the fifth. Hear that expression often that he gets his uniform dirty. Again. They show the replay on the video board here in Anaheim. It's a center fielder who made only one error all year. None so far in the postseason. Took an extra base hit away from David Bell. Lackey appreciates it. Now it's Pedro Feliz. One ball, one strike. Erstad has a gold glove, and he replaced the gold glove center fielder in Jim Edmonds. When Edmonds was traded to St. Louis for Adam Kennedy, who plays second base. Two and one. You could see Molina after that slider in the dirt, holding both hands up. Molina becoming the pitching coach. Telling Lackey to slow things down. Two and two. He has blown two fastballs by the Leafs. Still two and two. Base is clear with one out. Two out. Fourth strikeout for the rookie, John Lackey. You go back to game five. Darren Erstad with a diving catch to Rob Rich Aurelia. That one into right center. Here in game seven, he moved into left center field to Rob David Bell to start this fifth. Obviously a harder play when a left-handed throwing center fielder goes to his left and it goes to his right. The gloves there. Lost it. Pulled back on ball one. Kenny came in, having started this World Series one for twelve, had gone eight for fifteen since. But Lackey has retired him twice in ground balls in game seven. Two and
Two balls and a strike. The Anaheim Angels hoping tonight for five innings from John Lackey. He's not away from providing that. Trying to maintain the lead. The Angels had the best bullpen ERA during the regular season. With the exception of Francisco Rodriguez in the center there who might be available for one inning tonight. They are well rested down there. Often check the swing. Did not appear that Lofton went around. Close. It's a full count with Aurelia on deck. Rich has hit six postseason home runs. Giants hope that'll get something going. Aurelia, then Kent. After Kent, Bonds. First walk of the night handed out by John Lackey, and that draws a visit from Bud Black, his pitching coach. Joe, your comments about uh, Rodriguez relate to us by as Brendan Donnelly is will get up and throwing at one inning, probably. It's a quick inning, maybe another out or two. But you saw Ramon Ortiz next to him, and Mike Sosa implying to us that if they go to extra innings, Ortiz would probably be the guy. Allowing the guys who are used to the bullpen, used to coming in to relief, instead of the others. Now Rich Aurelia will stand in. As Lackey tries to go five. Aurelia's 0 for 2 tonight. 8 out of 30 in this World Series. Donnelly getting loose. With an eye on Jeff Kent who's on deck. Nice pick up by Spezio at first. Giants have, have not had a lot of men on base to test Benji Molina. But the one thing on that scoop by Spezio, Molina has had a tough time tonight with that slider to his right. He's been backhanding that ball instead of getting in front of it. And last night trying to backhand the ball. It's a wild pitch on Rodriguez. Kenny Lofton scored. It into right. Salmon waits for it. And the rookie Lackey is through five. Short rest. The 24 year old has answered a call tonight. Go out and try and win game seven. He's given his Angels a chance to do just that. The World Series on Fox brought to you by GM, the car company in overdrive by the James Bond Special Edition DVD Collection from MGM Home Entertainment. And by MasterCard. There are some things money can't buy for everything else. There's MasterCard. Up above, the Saturn Lightship. Saturn and its retailers hope you're enjoying Fox's coverage of the 2002 World Series. Tim Salmon leads off and takes a ball from Reader. Salmon, Anderson, and Gloss. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning with the Angels up by three. Should be handled by Aurelia. Run away. Moments ago, but Black 
greeted John Lackey as he came off the field after the top of the fifth. Nice going, John. Outstanding. Outstanding. Good. Nice pitch. Good ball great. Major yeah. pitch. I felt like I threw more than I did because I was concentrating so much on every pitch. You know what I mean? Here. Good time. There's a strike into Garrett Anderson. That's all good. Yeah. Boys, man. Yeah. Hey, go change your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> strike two on Garrett Anderson. Game seven, that's the way it is. Concentrating harder on every pitch. As Lackey made his way through five, if the Angels win this game. Lackey is the pitcher of record. He'll become the first rookie in 93 years to win a World Series game seven. There's Pierce Brosnan. Talked about James Bond at the start of the inning. As Anderson takes ball two, two, two. Garrett is lined into a double play and then so far has the biggest swing of the night. A bases clearing three run double against him, Yvonne Hernandez. KT Snow takes it and Reeder has faced five and retired five. Our Chevy Trucks in game box score for Anaheim. You see the fourth man down, Garrett Anderson with a three run double. Eckstein and Erstad. Have each scored a run. Eckstein's been on base twice with a hit and a walk. Benji Molina drove in the first run of the night for Anaheim with a two out RBI double back in the second. Good relief work tonight from San Francisco. Zerbe won perfect inning, kept the Giants in the game. And Reeder is facing Gloss trying to go two perfect innings. On the inside corner, good pitch, strike one. Brendan Donnelly will take over in the sixth. What an important inning that'll be for each side with Kent, Bonds, and Santiago. The three, four, and five hitters coming up for the Giants who will be trailing by at least three. And again, the Angels will be in a spot where they will pitch the Bonds. One and one. Two and one. Glass with a two run home run against Reeder in game four on a 2 0 count. Now Reeder behind two and one. By staying ahead of the hitters, pitchers give themselves a chance to come in on the battle. That's what the Giants have not been doing. Pitching Gloss inside. Three to one. The lefty Fulmer on deck. Santiago out to talk to Reader. This could be like a Bonds pitch around situation. Two out, nobody on, the left hander on deck. Seven. The 
We had Reeder pitching game four. That's Reeder pitching well out of the bullpen. And Yvonne Hernandez struggling again tonight, lasting only two innings. Talking about the postseason record, a lot of that damage done. The numbers put up back in 97, it's five years ago. Fulmer off the end of the bat. The reason why Dusty Baker added Chad Zerby to the roster for St. Louis in the LCS, kept him off for the Angels in the World Series, was because of their good left handed hitting. Yet it was Reeder in game four. And Yvonne Hernandez started in game seven. A one two pitch. Two balls, two strikes on full. So important for Kirk Reeder to keep it a three run game with the heart and soul of this Giants lineup coming up next inning. Snow trying to get the attention of Kirk Breeder to let him know he's going to play behind him. Runner goes as Fulmer grounds back to Reeder. Good work by Kirk Breeder, typically a starter coming out of the bullpen tonight. Two shutout innings. And we go to the sixth. Bonds due up second for the Giants, trail by three. The World Series on Fox is brought to you by Sprint, introducing PCS Vision, clearly a whole new way to look at wireless. Game seven moves into inning number six. Joe Buck and Tim McCarver with you. And Tim, Levon Hernandez was tapped on the shoulder to start this game seven because of his big game pitching experience. But it's John Lackey, the 24 year old, who pitched like a big game experienced pitcher going five innings tonight trying to build a track record of big game experiences John Lackey only 24 years old and trying to become the first rookie in 93 years to win game seven of a World Series now it's up to the Anaheim bullpen and right now it's the heart of the order for the Giants their chance to get back in Kent almost walked right into that first pitch from Brendan Donnelly Molina setting away. And Jeff Ken, I would imagine, would have been glad to take one for the team to lead off the sixth inning. Donnelly, what he's done this postseason, that win, by the way, came in last night's game six when he worked a scoreless eighth. He walked the leadoff man, Santiago, in that inning. It was a strike. His foul tipped off the bat of Jeff Kent. Postseason statistics for pitchers in particular can be so deceiving at 4.91 ERA, not indicative of the way Donnelly has worked. Three home, three run home run by Bernie Williams. Two hop and a gloss. Bad hop and he's still with it. One out. The bases are empty in front of Barry Bonds. So after giving the Giants and their fans a glimmer of hope. With his performance in game five, Jeff Kent with a walk and double, two two run home runs. Kent is hitless in this game seven. And Bonds led off the second, batted with the bases empty in the fourth, and again bats with the bases empty here in the sixth. One out of two tonight. Ready to hit on the first pitch now. Strike one. Bonds has clubbed eight home runs this postseason. He came into this postseason with only one in his career. 485 foot home runs in games two and six. One ball, one strike. Begs the question has he reached his peak yet? Here he is, 38 years old, and to even think of that question is astonishing. A 1-1. Pop 
Eckdahl. Off the shoot for Eckstein. Two out. Barry Bonds is a four-time MVP in the National League. Some have won more. Wayne Gretzky with nine in the NHL. Gordy Howe, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Michael Jordan, Bill Russell had five in the NBA. Bonds is not only the first four-time MVP award winner, but there's very little doubt that he will win his fifth after what he did this year. Walking 198 times and hitting a league-high 3-7. Santiago, strike one. And the 198 walks this season for Bonds. 68 were intentional walks. The old record was 45. And yet when the opposition did come after Bonds, he didn't miss. Hitting 46 home runs and driving in 110. Strike two. Perhaps you've noticed there are two types of masks being used. The goalie mask. Molina has on Santiago with the conventional mask. I think that goalie mask absorbs the shot a bit better. Santiago not only talking there to Molina, but right after the foul tip. And Molina smiled back at the 37 year old Giants catcher. Benito probably asked, it's fun, huh? A shot like that. Here's an 0 2 from Donnelly. Too far outside, ball one. Snow on deck. Santiago caught 125 games during the regular season. He's the ninth catcher to appear in the World Series at the age of 37 or older. Dowling runs it full, three and two. Giants got past the Braves, the Cardinals to get here. Now the Angels got past the Yankees, the Twins. A 3 2 to Santiago. Low for ball four. It's been a long year for Benito Santiago, taking a beating behind home plate. Last night, getting hit in the follow through, the left thumb. Fulmer's. Bat did it to him. And then catching a foul tip on a ball hit by Palmero off his left wrist. Bowlers of the profession. Normally, a base is empty, two out walk. No need for concern. But if Snow can jack one, the Giants are right back in this. A 4 to 1 Anaheim lead. Sixth inning of game seven. JT Snow. Takes strike one. Ripped into right field. That ball is going to get down and bang off the wall. Santiago will go to third. He is held there. And it's second and third with two out. A double by J.T. Snow into the right field corner. The score dictates base running. With the Giants trailing by three, there is no way the third base coach, Sonny Jackson, can send Santiago. Snow, his second hit of the night, 
Nice play by Salmon. We mentioned the last inning that the Giants could take advantage of Salmon's sore hand. He was hit on that hand earlier. But no evidence of it affecting his throwing. And now a situation that we talked about earlier in the night with Reggie Sanders, the schedule hitter. Tom Goodwin is going to come off the bench and bat. Sanders with a sack fly. He's also fly to right. Five out of 21 with six RBIs in this World Series is lifted for Tom Goodwin. And Donnelly gets a visit from Bud Black. The reason for this, as we stated earlier, Reggie Sanders too vulnerable to the high fastball. The one thing about Goodwin, if he puts the ball in play on the infield, there's a chance for him to beat it out. Blazing speed. Or if he dumps one into left field, then you score two runs. Looking for the first Giants pinch hit in this postseason. Signed in April after being cut loose by the Dodgers. Here's Goodwin. The chance to knock home two. Ball one with David Bell, the number eight hitter on deck. Can't let off, he grounded out. Bonds popped up. Santiago, a two out walk. Snow followed with a double. Good one. One and one. That last pitch is the type of pitch that Goodwin takes to left field. He does not have a lot of power. And Garrett Anderson shallow and left. And that's the way you have to play. One and two. Goodwin missed his pitch. Position. You can see contact right there on the trademark. But that is a type of hit that could give the Angels trouble. See right there, just above the trademark, firewood. Baker caught the foul ball. Asking for a big pinch hit. Tom Goodwin. Second and third, two out, four to one in the sixth. Inning over. The Giants threaten. And they lead two. At stranded six. Bottom of the sixth. Still four to one. Tom Goodwin stays in the game. He's in right in place of Reggie Sanders. Kirk Reeder is back to the hill, bottom of the sixth, and Spezio first up. Four to one, Anaheim. Giants took the early lead. A sack fly by Reggie Sanders in the second. The Angels tied it. A two out RBI double by Benji Molina. And then took the lead. A bases clearing double by Garrett Anderson.
Fabrizio 0 for 1 with a run score. He takes ball two. And Scott Spezio was seven years old. He and his dad used to go in their backyard in Joliet, Illinois. His father, Ed, would say, all right, Scott, pretend it's seventh game of the World Series. Here comes the pitch. Well, seventh game of the World Series. And Spezio, a big reason why there is a seventh game of the World Series with his three-run homer last night. A 2-2 pitch. Still 2-2. Two and two. Looking at a guy in Scott Spezio who was signed as a free agent by Anaheim because the Oakland Athletics didn't offer Scott the contract. So he was sitting by the phone. He got the call from the Angels. He has made a tremendous impact on this pennant winning team. Only Barry Bonds has hit left handed pitching better than Spezio. A 2 2 pitch. Popped up shallow right. Long run, good one. Out is Kent. Good one is there. One away. Tim talked about Ed Spezio with his conversations with his son Scott. Here's Scott talking about it. The reason he did that is to prepare me for the toughest situation in baseball uh, so that any other situation that I would encounter wouldn't be as tough as that situation. So today um, is going to be the day that I actually get to use it in the actual Game 7 of the World Series. So far he scored a run tonight. The Angels lead by three, bottom of the sixth. And a ball up and away to Molina. Kirk Reeder has picked up where Zerbe left off. The relief pitching for the Giants has kept San Francisco in this game. One ball, one strike. The Giants will have Bell, Feliz, and Lawson to play. Top of the seventh, the eight, nine, and one hitters. Three balls and a strike. One to deep right. Back at the track. At the wall, it's off the wall. And Molina has his second double of the evening. The count three and one. And as a hitter, you can choose a bat fastball. And that's what Molina does. The ball came down and hit Kenny Lofton on the left shoulder, it appeared. And Tom Goodwin backing up the play to hold Molina to a double. Now it's Adam Kennedy. To the right side for Kent. And that's the second out of the inning. Eckstein will be the hitter. Action just started for the Giants out in their bullpen. As a right-hander cranks it up. Toss it. Warming up earlier in the game. But it appears that Reeder will have to stay in and face X time because with Tasa getting ready. Good pitch on the inside corner strike one. Good 
play to his right. And the inning comes to a close. We have played six innings in game seven. The relief work and the defense has helped the Giants stay in it. Still 4-1 Anaheim. Back after this from your local Fox station. Brendan Donnelly is going to try another inning, seventh inning. And there is action for the Angels out in their bullpen. As the Giants bat down by three, four to one. David Bell first up, hitless tonight. Robbed of the hit, a diving catch by Erstad his last time up. Francisco Rodriguez. Scott Schoenweiss getting ready for the Angels in their bullpen. One ball, one strike. K Rod, they call him around here. Had a rough night last night, two and two thirds, allowed four hits, two runs, one of them, a 485 foot home run hit by Bonds. Two balls and a strike. Before last season, deals in the count two and two. Here's a guy who had spent 10 years in the minor leagues with nine different organizations before he got a shot. Minor league free agent has become redundant in the life of Brendan Donnelly. Pitched on two different independent teams. Here he is trying to protect a three run lead in the seventh inning of game seven. Bell pops it up. Behind the plate, it's out of play. Pedro Feliz on deck, and then back to the top of the order, Lawford. So if the bottom of the order can get something started for the Giants here in the seventh. Set up the guys like a really intense box. Bonds has been pitched to three times tonight. But all three times the bases were empty. A 2 2 to Bell. Driven into left field, well hit. Back is Anderson. At the wall. Tail from Brendan Donnelly as that fell just short of the top of the fence. Because it was just off the sweet part of the bat, just down on the end a bit. And Bell's ball doesn't carry. Bell hoping doesn't get his wish. Deep breath from Donnelly. Dusty Baker saying he might have a chance. I think while saying that, it looked like he was also saying, stay here, stay here to one of the bat boys. <laughs> Did not run out there and get the bat. I mean, he's become a guy who's managing a World Series game and trying to tell the bat boys when they should go out to the plate. Feliz, 0-2. Balls, two strikes, one out, nobody on. Two out. Second strikeout for Donnelly. Our Pepsi fan cam in the seventh inning. As selected by Mike Sosia. Home 
Town manager's choice. With two out, nobody on. Kenny Lawson will bat. Lofton 0 for 2 tonight with a walk. In the air, deep right center field. Erskine back. Just short again. Bell just short to left. Lofton just short to right center. And so far, the Giants just short tonight. Time to stretch in game seven. Still four to one Angels. The World Series on Fox is brought to you by Radio Shack, official sponsor of Major League Baseball. This is game number seven, bottom of the seventh inning, a four to one lead for the Angels. A team that was purchased by Gene Autry. You saw him or had a crude mode of transportation back in 1961. Yeah. That was old Wrigley Field where they actually filmed Home Run Derby. That's where these Angels started. Then to Chavez Ravine, they didn't want to call it Dodger Stadium. And then to Anaheim Stadium in 1966. Retired numbers, Jim Fregosi, six-time All-Star, Nolan Ryan, four no-hitters with the Angels. Rod Carew, member of the 3,000 Hit Club with the Angels from 79 to 85. And Jimmy Reese, number 50, an Angels coach for 23 years. A man who roomed with Babe Ruth, Jim Fregosi, number 11, could be... The new manager of the Giants if Dusty Baker leaves. That is the scuttle. Most seasons played with no World Series title. And the Angels are at the top of the list. You think of how Gene Autry became involved with the Angels in the first place, buying the team to fill programming on his radio station out here after the Dodgers and Walter O'Malley had taken that property away. Gene Autry, who played baseball and at one point in his young life was offered a contract, decided to stay a telegraph operator and was heard singing by Roy Rogers, offered a contract to become an entertainer, and he is on a walk of fame near you and beloved, one of the most beloved owners in the history of professional sports. I think Gene made the right move. He was offered $100 a month to play minor league baseball for the St. Louis Cardinals. Ball one to Erstad. Salmon and Anderson will follow. Reader has pitched shutout ball since entering in the fourth. Trying to keep the Giants within striking distance. But four to one in the bottom of the seventh. This crowd is alive and kicking for the Angels. Three and oh. The reason that this inning is so pivotal. The Angels have a three run lead. And up third in the top of the eighth is Barry Bonds. Three and one. Aurelia Kent and then Bonds in the eighth. Two big shutout innings turned in by Brendan Donnelly tonight. Five from the starter Lackey. The rookie 24 year old. Erstad chops one to Kent. That's one out in the seventh. Support your favorite team with the Major League Baseball Authentic Collection Premier Jacket featuring ripstop nylon and micro fleece lining. Call 1 866 MLB Game or visit MLB.com to order now. Salmon, who has walked, been hit by a pitch, and scored a run 
on the three run double by Garrett Anderson back in the third inning no scoring since. Good fastball for a strike from Reader. The innings turned in by Reader tonight adds more fuel to the fire for those who believe Reader should have started game seven. Instead of Levon Hernandez. Levon Hernandez tonight lasted into the third inning, did not retire a hitter. And then in game three of this World Series, didn't get through four. A one one, two balls and a strike. Two and one, Salmon takes ball three. There is help for Reader in the bullpen if the Giants need to go to it. Air and Watasek. Salmon ready to pound on three and one. It's a full count. Jay Wittasek is warming up because Troy Gloss is two hitters away. A look at Troy Percival, who's one inning away. Got him on the inside corner, two out, and Salmon spins, starts to argue, and then stops. As he looks at Jerry Crawford. Salmon going to first base. They came inside with a fastball. He thought it was low. And Jerry Crawford punches him out. But you're right. Salmon started to argue and then didn't. It had part of the plate, as you can see. Tim thought it was low. And the Angels don't get the call. Now with two out, nobody on. Garrett Anderson looks at ball one. Anderson. A three run double in the third. His only extra base hit of this World Series. Frankie Munoz, title character from Malcolm in the Middle, season premiere next Sunday, 9 Eastern, 8 Central. A 2 0 to Anderson. Two balls and a strike. It stays like this four to one as Tim mentioned bonds do up third in the top of the eighth inning. Could be the most important inning the rest of the way. Two and two now on Anderson. Aurelia Kent and bonds. The scheduled hitters. Rodriguez and Schoenweiss were up earlier for the Angels in their bullpen and their bullpen now quiet. Anderson reaching for it, flies to center, and Lofton takes care of it. More good work from Kirk Reeder. Bonds due up third in the eighth inning with the Giants trailing by three. To bolster the speed in the outfield, Alex Ochoa takes over and right. He also has a very good throwing arm. So does this guy, Francisco Rodriguez. Five and one in the postseason, an ERA of 2.04. The Giants reached him last night in game six. Two runs on four hits. He did strike out four. Aurelia first up. Strike one. Aurelia, Kent, and Bonds for the Giants who trail by three. Looked like Aurelia was taking all the way, realizing the importance of getting two on for Bonds. Troy Percival up at throwing. The 20 year old brings it inside corner outside corner 0 and 2.
one of those at bats where no right-handed hitter in baseball does anything other than this. Two fastballs for a strike and the slider to get a real yet. Now it'll be Jeff Kent. Kent, six straight years of 100 or more RBIs. And one of the most productive second basemen in baseball history. Bats with one out and nobody on and takes a strike. Peter McGowan, president of the Giants, quoted saying it's a free country. I'm not going to overpay for Jeff Kent. Even if he ends up a Dodger, I wouldn't like it. But I am not going to overpay a free agent at the end of the year. And look at that swing as an indication as to how nasty Rodriguez can be. Whoa. Talk about a defensive swing again for a guy who's driven over 100 runs six years in a row. A leg locker. Almost tried to lean into it. Ball one. Slider backs up and stays inside the Kent. Fourth time tonight with the bases empty because of this and Francisco Rodriguez in the World Series when facing right handed hitters has given up two hits and 21 at bats with 11 strikeouts. Bonds for the bases empty. Barry Bonds hit a 485 foot home run off Rodriguez last night. It came in the sixth. It made it four to nothing. Giants. It's two and zero. Oh. Last night, an 86 mile an hour changeup from Rodriguez. As Bonds found an exit. Three and zero. Oh. And while he may walk it. He's not trying to pitch around Bonds no with way. a three run lead, two out in the eighth. Three and one. Barry started to leave. He's used to it. <laughs> used to taking right turns and left turns at first. Should challenge him on three and one. And he misses low for a two out walk. That for Bonds is his 27th walk of this postseason. And now Santiago trying to extend the inning for JT Snow, who's on deck. Bonds last at bat of this World Series. He will end at eight out of 17 with 13 walks. Santiago. Strike one. Yet another defensive swing by Santiago off the end of the bat. The slider. Turning to ask Jerry Crawford if that was a good pitch. Off. 
What Rodriguez will try to do now is go wider to Santiago. Throw something off the plate away. Rodriguez gets through this eighth inning. You could certainly make the case that the biggest outs picked up in this game seven for the Angels were picked up on the mound by two rookies. Francisco Rodriguez here in this important eighth inning with the heart of the order coming out. John Lackey, the starter, who went the first five. Series on Fox is brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. By MasterCard, there are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. And by GMC, we are professional grade. Up above, aerial coverage of this World Series, courtesy of Saturn and the Saturn Lightship. Keep your eye on the sky when the Lightship visits a major sporting event near you. Tim Worrell takes over. Michael Eisner, the chairman and CEO of the Walt Disney Company. In charge of this Angels team, which is for sale. The price going up by the minute. As Gloss takes ball one low. Gloss, Fulmer, and Spezio against last night's losing pitcher. The guy who has been so valuable out of the bullpen for Dusty Baker, Tim Morrell. Off the end of the bat strike. Line. Peter Uberoff, former baseball commissioner. Two strikes. Current commissioner, Bud Sealy. Moss strikes out. Of the eighth inning, one out, nobody on here in game seven. The Giants had a three games to two series lead going into last night, had a five to nothing lead heading into the bottom of the seventh last night. The Angels got three in the seventh, three in the eighth. Tonight, after the Angels forced game seven, San Francisco got on the board in the second with a run. Anaheim answered, and then in the third, A bases clearing double scoring three by Garrett Anderson put the Angels up four to one pitching has dominated since on each side and the Angels as they bat in the bottom of the eighth are three defensive outs away from their first world championship. Fulmer hitless tonight. Stop snow. Great play by the six time Gold Glove Award winner, two out. 
What a play by J.T. Snow, diving to his left, landing on his glove, soft tossing to Warrell to get Fulmer. Nicely done. So now two out, nobody on. Spezio. Strike one. Kirk Reeder went four scoreless innings, allowing only one hit tonight. One walk, three strikeouts. Francisco Rodriguez worked the top of this eighth with a walk and three strikeouts. And Troy Percival will work the top of the ninth. Two balls and a strike. Sprint virtual manager question if the Angels win, is Barry Bonds the MVP? You got my vote. Bezio pops it up. Bell puts it away, and that'll do it for the first eight innings. Game seven. The Angels will take the field, and Percival will be right in the middle of it, trying to save it and trying to give Anaheim their first world championship. We move into the ninth inning. Game number seven, and Troy Percival, six for six, and save chances in the postseason. Forty saves during the regular year will try to do his thing and end the World Series. Snow, Goodwin, David Bell, the six, seven, and eight hitters. For the Giants. Snow, two more hits tonight. Ten in this World Series. Ball one. You can see there JT Snow taking all the way. He'll probably take a strike. We talked about it earlier. First of all, has a tendency to be wild up and away with left handed batters, particularly the first one, like that. 2 0. Oh. After a long night of sitting and watching last night, Percival came in and had a 1-2-3 ninth inning and a 6-5 Anaheim win. Snow, his third of the night. Two singles, a double, and 11 hits in 27 at bats in this World Series. JT Snow saying, uh uh, just one second. Now you've got Tom Goodwin up there, who is a threat to bunt. The one thing about Percival, he is not a real good fielder. So look for Goodwin to perhaps either take the strike or try to bunt. Strike one. The Giants need one more base runner to have a chance. Base hit, and he took it for the second strike. Out of 
play. Goodwin one for eight with three strikeouts in his career against Percival. Very deliberately throwing to Eckstein, not worrying about two. Tough takeout slide by Snow. But the Angels making sure of one. One on, one out. David Bell. The Anaheim Angels finished 41 games out of first place a year ago behind Seattle. They are two outs away from their first championship in 42 years of play. Established in 1961 as an expansion team. Second, as that misses for ball two, two and zero. Oh. Angels giving Goodwin second base. Spezia way behind him. We're in the ninth inning. That's the only way to play it. Shinjo is in the on deck circle. Bell on two and zero. Oh. Strike one. International field just got awfully quiet. So Yoshi Shinjo will be the pinch hitter for Pedro Feliz. Two curious ninth place hitters tonight for Dusty Baker's Giants. The reason Shinjo is batting is he's a high fastball hitter. And Baker hoping that he gets one in the middle of the plate. The first Japanese position player to ever pitch in a world to ever play in a World Series game. Has not ever faced Percival. Strike one. Lofton, the top of the order. Next. Strike two.
long ball from Troy Percival that just misses on the 0-2 count. Shinjo. He can hit that pitch, that high fastball. But he fouls it back. Tying run at the plate. Top of the ninth inning of game seven. Four to one and on. Two out. with two on two out. If Kenny Lofton gets the ball down he can pull it. That's his long ball down and in. Driven into right center field. Erstad says he has it. The Angels world champions. Time in franchise history. World 
Double chance. The celebration on the field after game seven, a four to one win for the Angels. Let's go down to the field in Jeannie's Alasco. And Joe, I think they ought to change the name on the sign out front because this is the happiest place on earth. After four decades worth of waiting, let's get to the hardware because we have a full stage up here. Jackie Autry, Michael Eisner, and of course, Mike Sosha, Bill Stoneman. We'll get to you in a minute, Troy. But first, the Commissioner of Major League Baseball. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations to the Anaheim Angels, team founded in 1961. This is your first world championship. And I want to say to all of you that somewhere Gene Autry is smiling right now. Congratulations to Disney, to Michael Eisner, who I'm about to present the World Championship Trophy, to Bill Stoneman, and to Mike Sosha, and all the Cal A Anaheim Angels. What do you think he'd be saying about this moment right now? Well, I'm standing here looking at his picture up in his box, and I've got his hat here with me, and all I can say is he loved every fan in this stadium, and he loved the California Angels. Michael Eisner, if someone would have handed you a script that included a story of a baseball team that started, say... 6 and 14, ripped off 99 wins, stumbled into the postseason, really everyone looked at it as a long shot, and they're standing here tonight, world champions. Would you even give it a chance? Well, if you have the spirit of Gene Autry being back in the saddle again, the Bavases, Bill Stoneman, and Mike Sosha, you never could count Orange County out. Making my way down, we'll save you for last. Mr. Stoneman, the genius to bring this gentleman in, a rookie manager, been here three years, Mr. Mike Sosa. What did you see in him? Oh, what a wonderful guy. Great communicator, tough, competitive, and just wanted to lead us to the world championship. All right, Mike, I finally get to answer you, ask you a question, and you can't answer me. We take it one game at a time, because there are no more games left. What is the difference in this club? I'll tell you, I've been in this game for a long time. I've never been around a group of guys that are so passionate about the game came every day to give their best, no matter what the circumstances were. This championship is these 25 guys in the clubhouse, and what they did for the city of Anaheim is incredible. Mike, is it, Mike, is it better as a player or as a manager? Excuse me? Better as a player or a manager? Much better as a player. I'm enjoying this. But these guys, this, this game's about playing it. And what these guys have done, they're going to carry for the whole, whole life. It's incredible. All right, speaking of players, we have some more to give out. Commissioner? It is my privilege 
to award the most valuable player to Troy Blouse. Troy, three home runs, eight RBIs, 10 hits, 22 total bases, three shy of the world record, and a big, big hit last night. Congratulations. Troy Gloss, nothing about this season seemed to come easy for you guys. And even going through the postseason, you lost the first game of the series, and then you went on to take the division series. Lost the first game of the Twins, took the championship. You saw the same thing in the World Series. You never say die attitude for this club. Absolutely. We've had that, uh, that, that, that way of thinking all year. And, uh, you know, no matter what we uh, were ever came against, we were going to play hard and we were going to leave it all out there. And that's what we did in here. Your big hit in game six, obviously the reason we are standing here tonight is the Angels put together one of the biggest come from behind wins in postseason history. Coming into today, that's deserving. After the win on Saturday, coming into today, tremendous confidence that this championship was yours? Well, we take it one day at a time. And today was the same way. Um, we, 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 were, we knew we'd go out, play 100%, leave it all on the field, and see where we ended up. Long-suffering club here in the postseason. How does it feel to, sorry people, to get the monkey off your bag? Not the rally monkey. We like the rally monkey. Yeah, it feels great. Uh, you know, these fans here have been waiting a long, long time for this. And we, I, I know we all feel so great to be the part of the team to bring it here. Congratulations, the 2002 World Series MVP. How does that sound? Sounds great. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. If we could give an assist on the night, ladies and gentlemen, John Lackey. Now, are you aware that you are the first rookie to win a World Series game in almost 100 years? It's not bad. <laughs> This is, this is where you want to be. Everybody wants to pitch in the World Series, Game 7. It worked out good for us. You get the call up in the middle of the summer. you got to join this club. You're a fresh face up here. Could you have imagined you would be standing here in late October? It's a long way from Salt Lake. These fans are awesome. It's been unbelievable. What about the resiliency of this club and its ability to rally back? That's the way we've played since I've been here. We're going to battle people. We go and come at you every inning. And we got us a world championship. Congratulations. Joe, this truly is heaven on earth. Seventh heaven, you might say. Back to you. Jeannie, thank you. We will check in now with the San Francisco Giants, their manager. Certainly one of the best in the game, Dusty Baker. Had a chat with Kevin Kennedy. I'm with Dusty Baker. Dusty, uh, the momentum changes in a seven-game series quite often. You guys had the advantage coming down here. What do you think was the turning point in the last couple of nights? Well, you know, the turning point was, you know, basically, you know, they came back last night. And uh, that was a big game for them to come back. And, uh, you know, they pitched, you know, outstanding today. Come here. Dusty, give me your feelings on, on your ball club in particular about these Giants that you've had. Well, hey, man, I'm proud of these guys. I mean, they, they fought the whole way. It wasn't easy getting here. Uh, no, it wasn't going to be easy when we got here. So, but we took it down to the, you know, the wire down to the end, uh, you know, seven games in the World Series. And, uh, boy, you sure hate to lose. It hurts us. It hurts us, you know, city. I mean, everybody's, you know, right now not feeling too good, but, you know, feeling very proud at the same time. I got, I'd be remiss if I don't ask you this because uh, you may not be back. We, we don't really know that. I know you don't really want to think about that right now, but uh, you're one of the best managers in baseball, three-time manager of the year. As we sign off for 2002, what does your gut tell you where you might be? I don't know. Right now, my gut's just, right now, it's just heavy. That's all. Okay. Thanks, Dustin. Go back to Joe. Uh, thanks to Dusty Baker, classy gentleman who gave the interview to Kevin Kennedy.
wherever Dusty Baker ends up that team will be lucky to have him and you look at Troy Gloss you look at Tim Salmon you look at this entire team this Anaheim team Troy Gloss you and I talked about a Tim during this World Series we hadn't seen much of Troy Gloss right you don't have to see him very long to understand that the 26 year old is truly one of the best players in this game and very deserving of the World Series MVP trophy. The defensive plays that he made, the strong arm that he showed from third base, and in recent memory, I can't think of anybody as locked in offensively as Gloss was during the postseason. The celebration continues here in Anaheim, California, as the Angels hoist that trophy for the first time on the heels of this 4-1 win over San Francisco in Game 7. More in a moment.